Dude, what's up? Oh, she pooped all over my jacket. I mean, she likes you. Tiny. There you go. Oh, he's eating the spoon. I would say that the only thing this bird is missing is a tail. And if it had one, it really would be a dinosaur. Animals are perfectly adapted to thrive in their environments. Aquatic creatures are usually designed with streamlined bodies and have enhanced electromagnetic receptors that help them navigate effectively through their watery ecosystems. Land-dwelling creatures, on the other hand, often rely on their appendages for navigation. Some have four legs, some have 100 legs, and others don't have any legs at all. Today we are going to focus on a class of animals that transcend almost all other species when it comes to both navigation and locomotion, birds. It's no secret that birds have been notoriously difficult to feature on the channel, because unlike most animals we get up close for the cameras, they are nearly impossible to catch. And while we do occasionally see them from a distance, most of the avian species we have encountered or birds living or being rehabilitated at wildlife sanctuaries. The Coyote Pack has been asking for more bird episodes, so we thought maybe it was time to count down our top five feathered friends. Coming in at number five, these birds might not be the biggest, but what they lack in size, they definitely make up for with speed. So excited. I absolutely love hummingbirds. All right, let's head into the aviary. You gotta move quick. We gotta go through a set of double doors. In you go. Go, go, go. Get that door closed. And into the aviary we go. Shawnee, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay, so let's talk about wing speed. If there's one incredible trait that the hummingbird has, it's the fact that its wings can go so fast. Now, how many strokes can that hummingbird do this a minute? Almost 4,800. Wow, 4,800 strokes in a minute. Can you imagine that? I mean, I'm sure if I sat here and did this, it would <laughs> take me half, lift. <laughs> half a day, and I'm not gonna lift off the ground. And these hummingbirds, I mean, I'm watching them. Look at this, they're just flying back and forth, hovering, and they can move forward, backwards, up and down. That's crazy. That's great, yeah. Now, your heart rate must be going pretty quick if you're flying that fast. How fast are their heart rates? Over 1,200. <laughs> This is one impressive little animal, that is for sure. All of that power packed into, I mean, these guys are tiny. They're like that. Yeah, about three grams. So that's about the weight of a penny. Wow, so you're telling me that a bird this size, I mean, he is tiny, but he only weighs as much as a penny. Yeah. That is impressive. Ashani, what I love so much about this aviary is that it feels like we're out there in the wild. Now, you do have the enclosure over top, but you barely notice it, and you can get so incredibly close to these hummingbirds. I know, it's a terrific experience. Yeah. Oh, jeez, look oh. how close this one is right here. <laughs> Absolutely. Look at that. Look at how comfortable he is getting that close to us. Wow. The Arizona Sonora Desert Museum is one of my favorite places to visit and their hummingbird aviary is guaranteed to get you up close with these speedy little birds. Up next is another teeny tiny species, only instead of feasting on nectar, this one is a voracious predator. Coming in at number four on our feathered favorites countdown, get ready to meet the Scopsol. Are you ready to meet the smallest owl ever? Get ready to meet Tiny, the African Scops Owl. She's so cute. This one's like pocket size. I wish it could fit her right into my jacket, but you know, she likes hiding behind it, but I don't think she'd actually want to go in a pocket. Look at the claws. Those talons are razor sharp. I was just trying to look at your talons. Razor sharp talons. You notice I'm trying to talk very quietly next to the owl. I don't want to scare it, don't want to stress it out. They have incredible hearing, so me shouting next to the owl is going to not be good for it. All owls are lightweight. They're mostly feathers, and as we know, they have hollow bones. But this owl right here weighs about 100 grams. That's it. That's one tiny little bird of prey. Look at how big those eyes are. Yes, very cute. You see just 
blinking at me. Now, as we know, owl species are nocturnal and they have incredibly efficient vision in the dark. So Tiny is a female. Now, when they lay a clutch of eggs, it's somewhere between two and four eggs, and the mother and the father both take care of the babies. Oftentimes, the mother will stay in the nest while the father goes out and hunts, bringing that food back to the nest for the mother, and once the chicks hatch, they then also reap the benefits of that prey. I got an idea. You know what I've got right over here? Cookies. Mealworms. Those no, not cookies. cookies. These are considered cookies for an owl, though. I've got these little tiny mealworms, and let's see. Now, this is me feeding a teeny tiny owl. Oh, there you go. That's good. Delicious, right? Dude, what's up? Oh, she pooped all over my jacket. I mean, she likes you. Tiny. Oh, it smells like rotten eggs. South Africa's adventures were sure filled with poop. From dung beetles to poop dracking. And then, of course, the incident with Tiny. But even with her bites and poos, this scopsal was a ton of fun to work with. Flying into our number three slot is a bird that was much more squawky, but no less messy. If you enjoyed watching me trying to feed Tiny, you're going to love our next star, the baby toucan. This is the real Fruit Loops right here. This is fresh cut fruit. And what I'm about to do is feed it to a baby toucan. It smells really good. This looks like something that I would eat for breakfast. So I have a feeling that this toucan is absolutely gonna love it. Okay. Oh boy, here he comes. Oh, look at that. That is a baby toucan. I have never seen one of these before. That is so amazing. You look like a little dinosaur. Look at that curious head. Look what I've got. Now, if I was a mama toucan, I would come in with some fruit just like this. There you go. Oh, he's eating the spoon. Look at that beak, quite the chomper. Here we go, coming in, coming in hot. There we go. And although it's a juvenile, that beak could still give me a pretty good chomp, so I wanna keep my fingers away from there. That's why I'm using a spoon. Here we go. Look at those eyes. Look at how big and buggy his eyes are. And without the feathers fully developed on the neck, you can see the curve of that vertebrae. Look at the feet. Can you see that? You know what it looks like? Reminds me of a baby pterodactyl. And a baby toucan of this size, obviously up in the trees, it's very important that he uses these claws to keep himself in the nest and on the tree branches. Now this baby toucan eats four times a day and quite a bit of food. Oh, I know, I hear you. More, 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 he says. You are one sloppy eater, you know that? He is a sloppy eater. I think you're getting more of this fruit on the log than you are in your mouth. We featured a plethora of cute animals at the Alturas Wildlife Sanctuary, but nothing was more adorable than that noisy little toucan. The next bird encounter is actually the only one on the list that took place in the wild. And boy, was it a challenge to track down these majestic creatures. Soaring in at number two, it's the bald eagle. So just up here to my left, we've got two eagles right on the shoreline. Filming eagles is not easy. They can be very skittish. We want to move in as slow as we possibly can, stay stealthy, set up the 600 millimeter lens, and try to get this shot. We've been on the river for hours looking for this one opportunity to actually film these eagles. I think this is it. I'm so excited. Okay. So right now we're trying to sneak in close on the eagles. Mark's got the 600 millimeter. We're trying to stay in a straight line so that the animals only think it's one human sneaking up on them. Careful, this is sink mud. Running speed. Wow, that's cool. Now, the two eagles that we're looking at, that is pretty much the king and queen of what's considered the Eagle Council Grounds. And in the winter, there will be over a thousand eagles right here where these two rivers converge. The water doesn't actually freeze, so it's like an eagle buffet line of eating all these salmon that are still swimming upstream. Okay, so right now, we're gonna slowly try to move in and get an even better shot. Okay, so we're changing up the strategy just a touch here. Yep. Mark's gonna be up front operating the 600 millimeter Woo. from the front of the raft. 
We've got an eagle up here in the trees. We're gonna try to do a drift by and get an epic shot. You ready for this? All right, load it up. We've got a mature eagle up in the tree, so we're gonna try to just drift by and get a shot. Maybe it'll fly just as we're passing underneath it. It's the closest we've been to a bird all day long. Mark's perched up on this log and he's getting the shot. One day we hope to return to Alaska with the goal of getting an even closer look at these iconic birds and maybe even hands-on with one at an eagle sanctuary. Well, we started small and seem to be working up in size. Next on our list is the largest bird we have ever had the chance to work with. It also happens to be the world's most dangerous bird and a true avian dinosaur. Look at how ancient looking that face is and the coloration in the skin, the crest of the head. Wow, the crest is a lot bigger than I imagined it to be. And that's hollow, right? It is hollow. Yeah. But it's still, it's it's real fibrous, right? Like it's she just fibrous. Yeah. ran me in the face with it, so I definitely have to be careful. It's very similar in density to a beak. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if she's running through the environment, she can kind of just keep her head down and break through all the underbrush. Definitely, what they do is they stretch their neck out real long, which will extend a few feet in front of their body as they're running. That'll help push the branches away from her, the rest of her body as she runs. Now, I'm not sure if you notice this, but if you look around the side here, yeah. you're gonna see these wings. Yes, little tiny wings. Yeah, and they have really stiff quills. Wow, look at that. Yeah. It almost looks like a porcupine's quill. Look at the size of this bird's legs. Look at all the scales. This bird weighs about 130 pounds. That is a massive animal. This is the second largest species of bird in the world, second only to the ostrich. And they're incredibly fast. They right? are extremely fast. They can run around 30 miles per hour through jungle underbrush. Wow. I would say that the only thing this bird is missing is a tail. And if it had one, it really would be a dinosaur. Hi, there you go. Look at the skin. You wouldn't expect a bird to have bright blue skin like that. It's so beautiful. And here's something you might not know, that the entire bird's body is blue. If I just fold back those feathers a tiny bit, look at that. Blue all the way through. Their feathers are incredibly coarse. These ones on the outside here almost feel like horse hairs. And then underneath, she's really soft and downy. When you look at the feet of this bird, Look at those scales and look at the claws. It looks just like the foot of a velociraptor. And that claw on the inside edge of the foot, razor sharp. Now if this bird was out in the wild, it would actually be a couple inches longer and sickle shaped, just like a raptor. Now these birds are capable of jumping almost six feet in the air. And I can't even imagine how terrifying it would be to be out there in the jungle, have one of these cut through the underbrush, run at you, leap, and you take one of those claws to the face. And when you look down the length of that beak and into those eyes, you transcend back 65 million years into the past, and you feel as if you were looking straight at a dinosaur. Wow, that is intimidating right there. Everyone knows how much I love dinosaurs, and my interaction with the cassowary was about as close as I'll ever come to staring down the snout of a prehistoric creature. Birds are one of the most unique species on our planet, and we do plan to feature more of them in the near future. Do you have a favorite species that you would like us to feature? If so, put your top five bird encounters in the comment section below, and we will see how many of them we can capture on camera. If you thought getting up close with the cassowary seemed intimidating, make sure to go back and watch the episode where I challenged this avian dinosaur to an apple eating contest. And don't forget, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next wild adventure.